به برنامه درس زندگی خوش اومدید در برنامه امروز یک مهمون معروف محقق و نویسنده دارم به نام جویل ریچردسون ایشون در مورد حمله اعراب به ایران و همینطور قلب پدرانه خدا صحبت خواهند کرد ولی قبل از اون یه صحبت خوصی با شما دارم امروز ما مهمونی هستن که در آمریکا خیلی خیلی معروف هستن کتاب هایی نوشتن که پر، پر ترین یکی از پر ترین کتاب های آمریکا شده میلیون ها به فروش رفته و امروز افتخار میکنم که آقای جول ریچردسون مهمون ما هستن خیلی خوش آمدید Thank you for having me on, Pastor Hamouz. آرمان شما من اول میخوام چند تا سوال دارم البته رجب یکی میخوام راجع به حمله عرب به ایران صحبت بکنم که میدونم شما تحقیقاتی در این مورد کردی کتاب ها نوشتی درس میدی پروفسور یعنی با دارم میدونم از کسی دارم میپرسم که حرفش همینطوری نیست کار کردی ولی قبل از اون میخوام اول با خود داشتنا بشیم این راجع به خودت بگو من برای شما ترجمه میکنم Well, I, uh, I came to faith at age 19 I was actually ساله بودم که به مسیح ایمان آوردم Raised in a very, very nominal a Roman Catholic home. توی خونه ای که کاتولیک بودن به دنیا آمدن. And uh, lived as a uh, as a hedonist for most of my uh, my teenage years. بیشتر سالهای زندگی مو بی خدایی زندگی کردم. Uh, doing drugs and uh, trying to enjoy myself as a uh, really as a child. با مواد مخدر و همینطوری بچگی می‌کردم. And uh, I didn't think very highly of religion in general. اصلا به مذهب کاری نداشتم. براش ارزشی قائل نبودم برای مذهب. I had a love for God, but I didn't have much of an appreciation for for religion. خدا رو قبول داشتم، دوست داشتم، ولی برای مذاهب اصلا ارزشی قائل نبودم. And uh, on one very hot August uh, day, a friend of mine uh, and I decided to drive uh, from the northeast of the United States where we live down to Memphis, Tennessee. یه روزی که روز گرم ماه شهریور بود با تصمیم گرفتم که با ماشین از یک ایالت به ایالت دیگه برم. We were looking for a land to purchase which was very cheap at that time. و دنبال زمینی میگشتیم که ارزون بود چون موقع زمان زمین ارزون بود که بخریم. And we were driving in this uh, this cheap little truck that had no air conditioning. با یک کامیونی وانتی داشتیم میرفتیم که توش کولر هم نداشت. And so we were very hot and uh, after about 20 hours on the road we were looking for some place to uh, to clean up. و 20 ساعت داشتیم تو این گرما رانندگی می‌کردیم بعد از 20 ساعت گفتیم یه جا وایستی می‌خورد استراحت کنیم. And we found behind a, a grocery store in a large field we found a Christian preacher was having a meeting. و بعد یه جایی که استادیم دیدیم پشت یک مغازه ای یک واعظ مسیحی مردم رو جمع کرده داره معایزه میکنه And so uh, as a joke uh, we decided that we would ask the preacher to baptize us برای مسخره کردن این شخص بهش گفتیم آره ما ایمان داریم ما رو ما رو تعمید بده so that we could cool off که گفتیم ما رو تو آب ببره اقلا گرما گفت اوا گرمه بهش بگیم برای مسخره بگیم ما رو تعمید بده خونک شیم Uh, but then, of course, the joke was on us, and the Christians there sort of uh, roped us into staying for the the evening service. Well, but we were not going to sit and watch the service. We were going to sit and watch the service. We were going to sit and watch the service. We were going to sit and watch the service. We were going to sit and watch the service. We were going to sit and watch the service. We were going to sit and watch the service. We were going to sit and watch the service. We were going to sit and watch the service. We were going to sit and watch the service. Uh, pretend that none of this is real. I was sitting in the back, just sort of skeptically watching this all take place. And there was an older man that went up and got prayed for who had been blind. Uh, since he was a child, according he claimed that he had been blind since he was a child. رفت جلو که سنش هم بالا بود می گفت از بچگی من من کور بودم و رفت جلو که برای کوریش دعا کنم and uh, after the preacher prayed for him the preacher asked him he said is anything has anything happened can you see it all و وقتی که واعظ اون مسیحی براش دعا کرد بهش گفت حالا چیزی میبینی 
And he, he was speechless. He, you could tell he was something was happening, but he didn't know what to say. و اصلا زبان این شخص بند اومده بود. معلوم بود یه اتفاقی افتاده ولی نمیتونست بیان کنه. And so he walked uh, out of the meeting into the field where all of the cars were parked in the field, and he walked out uh, into the into the night all by himself. و بعد همینطوری بدون که حرفی بزنه شروع کرد قدم زدن و از اون جلسه خارج شد و رفت توی اون دشت. And I, from a distance, I followed him uh, out into the field, and I watched as he knelt down in the grass and began to look up toward the sky. and began to just weep and sob like a little baby. منم همینطوری از روی دور دنبال این مرد رفتم دیدم رفت توی دشت زانو زد به آسمان نگاه کرد و مثل یه بچه گریه می‌کرد. Just deep belly sobs and I walked up to him and I asked him if in fact something had happened had he really been healed. من رفتم جلو بهش گفتم اتفاقی برات افتاد واقعا الان داری می‌بینی؟ And through his tears and through his crying he asked me a bit about myself. و همینطور که گریه میکرد اون از من سوال کرد. And eventually he looked up to the stars, he looked up to the sky and he raised his hands and just with tears and trembling, his whole body was trembling. He said, I can see the stars right now. و همینطور که زانو زده بود به آسمان نگاه میکرد و دستاش میلرزید و گریه میکرد گفت من الان این ستاره ها رو میبینم. And uh, I and I believed him. و من باور کردم این شخص داره درست میگه. So then I walked, I walked back into the, the meeting where the preacher was preaching. پس برگشتم به اون جلسه که اون واعظ داشت صحبت می‌کرد. And now I said maybe I need to take the things that he's saying seriously. گفتم حالا بعد بسه که به حرفای این مرد بیشتر توجه کنم جدی‌تر. And so the joke was on me. پس برای همین اومدم خدا رو مسخره کنم خودم مسخره شدم. And the Holy Spirit of God confronted me. روح القدس منو مجاب کرد. And as the preacher was preaching from the gospels و همینطور که داشت پیغام می آورد از کتاب مقدس he read the words of John the Baptist کلمات یحیی رو می گفت who said the axe has already been laid at the root of the tree therefore bear fruit in keeping with repentance و می گفت که این تبر اومده که این درخت رو بزنه پس توبه کنید و میوه بیارید because every tree that does not bear fruit will be cast into the fire چون که هر درختی که میوه نیاره در آخر به آتش انداخته میشه and i had uh, in my own heart believed that i was a good person i was struggling to try to be a fairly moral person although you know, i was doing drugs and so on. i believed that in my heart i was a good person البته اون موقع با اینکه مواد مخدر هم میکشیدم ولی تو قلبم میگفتم من آدم بدی نیستم چون سعی میکنم آدم خوبی باشم پس خودم آدم خوبی میدونستم but the lord the holy spirit convicted me in my heart and he said that the trajectory that you're on the 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 downward moral slide that you're on you cannot stop it and if you don't if you don't completely give your life to me right now your destiny will be in the hellfire ولی خداوند نشون داد که آره فکر می کنم آدم خوبی ام ولی مسیری که میرم مسیریه که به جهنم ختم میشه and so i gave my life to jesus that time asamunja unsha zendegimo be khodavan separdam and it was it was very shortly thereafter that i used to go into my hometown of boston و بعد از اون بود که به شهر خودمون که بوستون هست می رفتم و با مردم رجب خداوند رجب مسیح و کتاب مقدس صحبت می کردم But most Americans and most Westerners, they don't really like to talk about God or the Bible and Jesus. ولی اکثر غربیان اصلا دوست ندارن رجب مسائل روحانی یا خدا یا مسیح صحبت کنن And then I discovered Muslims. و بعد اونجا بود که با مسلمان ها آشنا شدم. I met some Muslims. با بعضی از مسلمان ها. And while you certainly can't say that uh, there is a generality with with all Muslims. البته هیچ وقت نمیشه گفت که همه مسلمان ها اینطور هستن. If there is one thing that you can say, it is that they love to talk about God and the Bible and Jesus. ولی یه چیزی که مسلمان ها دارن که دوست دارن راجب خدا و راجب ایمان و راجب مسیح صحبت کنن. And so I fell in love with Muslims. برای همین عاشق مسلمان شدم. And so I would go into Boston and I would meet different different Muslims just you know wandering around and we would sit down and we would have discussions sometimes for hours. برای همین بوستون رفتم با مسلمان می شستم و گاهی تا ساعت ها با هم صحبت می کردیم. And this was really the beginning of a Uh, a divine plan on my life if you will for the next several years i was reaching out to muslims and loving muslims و این شروع یک زندگی من بود که با مسلمانان دوست باشم و باشون زندگی کنم 
and, and telling them about my love for Jesus and how wonderful God has been to me and how he has revealed himself to me personally. و بهشون بگم که محبت خدا و اینکه خدا چطور خودش رو به من آشکار کرده. And I hope to continue to be able to do this until the day that I die. و دل من اینه که تا روزی که زندم از محبت خدا با دیگران صحبت بکنم و اینو در شما می‌بینیم که کتاب‌های نوشتی راجب راجب اسلام از او تحقیقاتتون و راجب کتاب مقدس و اسلام راجب نبوت شما کتاب‌های زیادی نوشتید و کتاب مقدس و نبوت با با وقایی که داره اتفاق می‌افته. یه می‌خوام دو تا سال امروز می‌خوام ازت می‌کنم قسمت اول میخوام که راجع به تحقیقات خودتون اون چکیدش رو راجع به حمله عرب به ایران و حمله اسلام به ایران چند تا نکته ای که تو تحقیقاتتون شما بهش رسیدید رو با عزیزان ما در میان بگذارید بعد میخوام راجع به پدری خدا صحبت بکنیم بفرمایید یس yes, this is this has been a burden on my heart i um... Uh, I say I love Muslims, but I particularly love the Persian peoples. من خیلی تو قلبمه. من میگم که مسلمان رو دوست دارم، ولی به طور خاص ایرانیا رو دوست دارم. And of course, I know that, uh, or at least I would hope that many Persians are are more familiar with the history, uh, uh, their history than than I am. But in my studies, what what I have found. و امیدوارم که و ایمان دارم خیلی از ایرانی ها البته به تاریخ خودشون خیلی آگاه هستن ولی با تحقیقاتی که خودم کردم به این نتیجه رسیدم is the Persian Empire the ancient Persian culture uh, it was a vast and beautiful empire a tolerant empire with uh, many different peoples of different religious persuasions and ideas که امپراتوری ایران خیلی عظیم بوده و تنها امپراتوری بوده که ملت ها و قوم های دیگر رو تحمل می کرده و اجازه می داده که رای خودشون رو دنبال کنن and of course you had the Zoroastrians but you had many many Christians that were Christian Persians and the Persian peoples had warm relations with uh, all of the peoples around them in, even including the Jewish peoples و البته زرتشتی بود اون کشور فارس ولی به مسیحیان اجازه میدادن حتی به یهودیان اجازه میدادن که زندگیشون رو در اون امپراتوری ایران انجام بدن but then when you had the the arab invasion uh, of persia uh, persia as led by uh, khalid ibn walid و وقتی که به حمله عرب به ایران که به رهبری خالد ابن ولید انجام شد میرسیم who was the the general of the the islamic armies the arab armies at that time ke un general un artish arab bud ke be iran hamle kard when when he came into persia there was a strong christian persian resistance vaqti ke umad iran yek irani ha dar muqabelesh muqavamat kardan masihiyan irani because there was the famous invitation where where Khalid issued the invitation to the Persian peoples he said uh, we invite you to Islam if you accept it it will go well with you otherwise i bring you a people who love death va be irani ha yek hoshdar dad in general walid va bad goftesh ke man ya shoma be islam ro miyarid ya in ke ma yek lashkari mifrestim ke ashiq margam but these noble persians said we cannot forsake Uh, our faith and so we must renege on your invitation. و این ایرانی ها گفتن نه ما ایمانمون رو نمیتونیم کنار بگذاریم پس باید این دعوت شما رو رد کنیم. And so as a result he literally beheaded hundreds upon hundreds of uh, resisting Persians. و برای همین این این شخص صدها و صدها و هزاران نفر سر ایرانی ها رو قطع کرد. And this really marks the turning point in the history of the Persian peoples from uh, from a beautiful ancient culture to where the oppression began to creep in and this dark cloud crept over the Persian uh, nation. این تاریخ ایران عوض کرد. تاریخ ایرانی که انقدر باز بود و انقدر از لحاظ فکری باز بود و دیگران رو تحمل می‌کرد به فرهنگی که توش روش فشار و تهدید و ترس اومد. In so many ways, it's a it's a suffocating force that suffocates freedoms and suffocates so many of the beautiful aspects of Persian culture. و این نیرویی که وارد ایران شد مثل که ایرانو خفه کرد. اون چیزهای خوبی که در ایران بود، اون محبت و اون آرامش و اون تحملی که از دیگران اومد مثل که یکی اومد این روح ایرانی رو خفه کرد. And even today, we still see this suffocating force that's trying to suffocate. the the beautiful spirit of the persian peoples. ما امروز هم می‌بینیم یه روحی هست که می‌خواد ایرانی‌ها رو و اون روح زیبای ایرانی‌ها رو خفش کنه.